Hello everybody, welcome to yet another uh, video. This time we'll be talking about conformal maps. Um, as you well know, we spent a lot of time in this semester talking about rigid motions. And rigid motions are, by definition, the maps on the plane that preserve length. But you can have another type uh, of property that you might be interested in, namely angles. Angles is another basic notion included in geometry, so you might ask uh, what are the maps that preserve angles? Do they all have to preserve length? Or do all the maps that preserve length have to preserve angles? So, first of all, you have to make precise what you mean by an angle. You can just say, oh, if I have two intersecting lines, then I know what an angle between them is. It's just an angle between them. Um, but suppose that you have some transformation. And this transformation will map these lines into something. And you would like to know that the angle stays the same. That is, the angle between the images is the same as the angle between the lines that you started with. However, as you know very well from the example of an inversion, lines under transformations on the plane need not be mapped to lines. In particular, inversions map certain lines to circles. So how would you then measure the angle of the images if there are no longer lines? So this is a problem that uh, uh, is very well known in geometry and uh, a, a general way to tackle this problem is to talk about tangent lines. Uh, so you take not just two lines, you don't define an angle between two lines, you define an angle between two smooth curves. How do you define an angle between two smooth intersecting curves? Well, you take tangent lines at the point of intersection and just say, well, the angles between these curves at this point is just the angle between the corresponding tangent lines. That's all well, and you definitely can develop the theory this way. However, that's really going into the terrain of differential geometry. Uh, something we will have to do at least uh, partially when we talk about spherical and hyperbolic geometry. But for the geometry on the plane, the Euclidean geometry, I don't want to develop this whole formalism yet. So we don't want to talk about how to define a tangent line to any curve on the plane. I mean, that would require us to introduce derivatives, and definitely that's not something Euclid ever thought about. However, there are at least two types of curves to which we can talk about uh, having tangent lines. Well, one is lines themselves, then the tangent line to a line is just that same line. Okay, so we can talk about angles between lines. And another, another uh, uh, geometric object to which we have defined what a tangent line is, is a circle. We know that a tangent line to a circle is a, is a tangent line that is a line that intersects the circle, but only at one point. So it only touches it at that point. Therefore, for the use uh, in this course or in this part of the course, we just define angles between two types of objects, namely angles between lines and angles between circles. And of course, similarly, you can define angles between a line and a circle. Uh, so essentially by saying that a line between two circles is the line between the tangent lines. A line between, uh, an angle, I'm sorry, an angle between circles is the angle between the corresponding tangent lines. An angle between lines is just the usual thing. And an angle between a line and a circle is the angle between that line and the tangent line. Okay, so here uh, I wrote down a definition for what it means to have uh, two circles intersect at a certain angle. So given two circles, as you see here on the picture, you have the blue circle and the orange circle, and they intersect at a point A. So we then define the angle between these two circles at A, at the point of intersection, to be the angle between the tangent lines to these circles. So at this point A, at the point of intersection, I draw a tangent line to the circle A, then I draw a tangent line to the orange circle, and this is the angle between the tangent lines. So I um, would say that that is the angle between the circles. Okay, and then I define a map. I say that a map from a plane to a plane that preserves angles between lines 
and between circles, we will call such a map a conformal map. So um, the first question that comes to mind, we know essentially two kinds of maps, rigid motions and inversions. Uh, rigid motions preserve length, and inversions do not preserve length. So the question is, do any of them preserve angles? That is, are any of them conformal? So. So here's our little chart. Rigid motions, inversions. Preserve lengths. Preserve angles. So in other words, are conformal. And again, I'm saying preserve angles. That just means preserve angles between lines and circles. So what do we know about uh, the answers for this chart here? The answer is yes, and that's by definition. And here the answer is no. So here, for now, I have two question marks. And we begin by proving the following proposition. Rigid motions are conformal. So rigid motions preserve angles, which means, thanks to that proposition, I can put a yes here. OK, well, let's see why that is true. So proof. So we first consider the case of lines. Of intersecting lines. So let F be a rigid motion. Let A, B, C be an angle. OK, well, that is that is a case of um, intersecting lines, because when I say A, B, C, I mean there is a line that goes through B and A, and there's a line that goes through B and C, and the lines intersect at B, so they form an angle between lines. So let's draw a picture here. So I have um, B. A C and so this is my angle ABC. Um, you see what I can do now is I can complete this picture to a triangle. So consider the triangle ABC.
let a prime b f of a b prime b f of b and c prime b f of c now rigid motions are bijections so that means the images a prime b prime c prime is still uh, is still a triangle so maybe it's maybe the it's a it sort of looks differently um a b c and of course it's not a b c it's a prime b prime c prime Okay, but what do we know? Since F preserves lengths, it's a rigid motion. We have that the length AB is equal to the length A prime B prime. The length AC is equal to the length A prime C prime. And the length BC is equal to B prime C prime. So the triangle A prime B prime C prime is congruent to the triangle ABC by the side side side. Ah, but if these two triangles are congruent, that means the angles are all the same. So these orange angles here at B and at B prime must be equal. So the angle um, ABC must be equal to the angle A prime, B prime, C prime. Note that I do not worry about the orientation of the angle. It's not an it's not an oriented angle, just the measure is the same. And the definition of conformal map, I also do not care about the orientation. Okay, so I know that rigid motions must preserve angles between lines, and that just essentially follows from the um, from the side 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 uh, theorem. So now what about circles? Um, So now, consider the case of circles. So we start with a circle. So let C be a circle. Let A be uh, a point on the circle. And let TA be the line tangent to the circle C at A. So what's the picture here? So we have a circle. We have a point on the circle A, and we have a line that's tangent. Okay, and uh, so we take a rigid motion, and what you might want to uh, think about a little bit and convince yourself that the rigid motion is going to take the circle to um, another circle in fact of the same radius so if the red circle is called C then the 
and the glow one I will call C prime. It has to have the same radius because uh, rigid motion preserves length, so it preserves the distance between the center uh, and the point, any point on the circle. And the point A maps somewhere to a point A prime. Okay, so let's write this in words. Let C prime be the image of C and A prime be the image of A. Note that C prime is also a circle of the same radius as C. Okay, and what I'm now interested in is what happens to this line. The line, the tangent line, this is the line uh, uh, TA, is mapped to another line because rigid motions again map lines to lines. This is something for you to again think about a little bit to convince yourself of that. Uh, on the other hand, Uh, F of TA is also a line because rigid motions are bijections if the initial line had one point in common with the circle then the image of that line first of all is going to go through the point A prime and that must be the only point it will have in common with the circle furthermore A prime uh, lies on both C prime and the image of the tangent line and must be the only point that lies on both. C prime and F of TA. Right? That's because the rigid motion is a bijection. If there was another point where the circle and the tangent line would intersect, then, sorry, and the line uh, T, uh, the image of TA would intersect, then there would be another point here where they would have to intersect. Ah, but if uh, F of TA is a line, that goes through A prime, and that's the only point of the circle C prime through which it goes, it must be tangent. So we conclude that F of TA is the tangent line to C prime at A prime. So now, after all this analysis, I can just say that the line uh, F of TA is the tangent line. And this is essentially the end of the argument, because once I know that tangent lines to circles are mapped to tangent lines to the image of the circle, that means that the fact which I want to be true, namely that the angles between circles are preserved, just follows from the fact that the angles between lines are preserved. Because if I take two intersecting circles, like we had on the picture before, I get two tangent lines that intersect at a certain angle, and I know that these two tangent lines are mapped to the corresponding tangent lines on the other side, and I already know that the angles between lines are preserved by the previous part of the argument. So now I get by the definition of what it means to, for two circles to form a certain angle that the angles between circles so between the tangent lines to the circles are also preserved. So as so now so the case of angles between circles is 
now follows. from the case of angles between miles. And this finishes the proof. It's kind of interesting that uh, rigid motions that are only defined to preserve length actually also preserve angles. That's, that, that's automatic. And the way to think about it, the way to wrap your head around this is, well, that's just because if I have a triangle and another triangle whose all lengths of the sides are the same, then all the angles must be the same. And of course, rigid transformations must preserve the lengths of the triangle. So that's just the first part of the argument that we did. And the second part, the angles between circles, is a little bit more involved, but it essentially boils down to the previous case. Okay.